Hello there again, friends. Today is 1-17-2022, and today is Odin Project Vlog Day 42. And this is part two in our series of um, uh, Project uh, JavaScript Tic... Uh, I always say Tic-Tac-Toe. JavaScript Project Rock, Paper, Scissors. And um, I'm happy to report that I was able to finish it today. And so this video is wrapping up number six here. And we'll go through that. It says, write a new function called game. Use the previous function inside of this one, which was play, play I think it was play game. Uh, play round, sorry. Play round. <clears throat> that's inside of it. Uh, that's inside a game. You'll put inside a game to play five round games and keep a score and report a winner and losers at the end. You have not uh, you have not officially learned how to do loops over code to repeat function calls. If you already know about loops from somewhere else, or if you feel like doing some more learning, feel free to use them. If not, don't worry. Just call play around function five times in a row. Loops are covered in the next lesson. At this point, you should... <coughs> You should be using console.log to display the results of each round and the winning winner at the end. Use prompt, uh, the prompt function to get input from the user. Feel free to rework your previous functions if you need to. Specifically, you might want to change your return values to something more useful. And five, uh, feel free to create more helper functions if you think it would be useful. So I didn't create more helper functions on this part. Uh, I I don't know what they mean by that, but what I think they mean is uh, when I created that capitalize um, function in the previous lesson, that's probably a helper because that wasn't a requirement in the in the uh, um, that wasn't one of the requirements here, and uh, and so I added that as an additional function. So I think they might be talking about something like that. So. Um, Without further ado, we'll just uh, hop right into this. So, to start off with, um, the first thing I did <coughs> since the last video, excuse me, is I um, took everything out of index.html uh, and just uh, Google searched how to create a script source to point to just script.js, and then I created a script.js file and ported everything into there. Um, the only reason I really did that is, um, you know, the text doesn't say necessarily to do that. It says you can do that. But I did it just because I wanted some practice because we haven't done any of that up to this point in any of the exercises. We've just been writing it inside the script tag. And that's the only thing that's different from the start here is I moved that. So um, so that's that. Um, so I'll make collapse that so make this bigger. I hope you can read this okay. Um, so the computer play function, nothing's changed, uh, from the last video, uh, pretty much everything else has though. So like I said in the last video, it was, stuff was probably going to move around and get rearranged and recoded and refactored and it did. So you'll see that as we go through it, um, for the sake of bouncing back and forth from the, uh, rock, paper, scissors requirements. Uh, I'm not really going to do that. I'm just going to kind of go line by line through the rest of the code and show you what we're doing. And I tried to clean it up and added comments. And I will say, if you see a double hash comment with two spaces, this is just how I'm doing it for right now. If there's two spaces like this, that means that that's a comment I put in to um, help with the flow of the re readability of it so you know what's go we know what's going on. And then if it's got no space in between the comment hashes that means that it's just that's probably a console log that I commented out for debugging purposes and I didn't want to delete it for a simple fact that if I needed to go back and troubleshoot something all I'd have to do is just delete the two hash marks and I could run it so and it would report out my values so that's that so with that said we come down here created the game function which is part of number six and called called it the game start. So this is um, starting out with four variables. Um, uh, created a, a rounds played, players win, computer win, and game winner. 
Round round play rounds played it starts out with a zero as an integer. Player win is a is a number as well. No, I shouldn't say integer number as well. Players rounds player is zero integer. Players win zero integer. Computer wins zero integer and game winner is an empty string. Um, we did that basically just to initialize the uh, and and declare these variables because we're going to use them in the loop that we're going to go over right now. Um, game winner isn't used in the loop, but you'll see here. The these three are though. So the first thing it says here in the comment is loop through the five rounds, track the rounds, and win. So if you remember, we just talked about we're going to loop through five times for five rounds, and we're going to track as we're looping, we're going to track the rounds and the wins and report out at the end. Uh, that was basically in a nutshell the whole number six requirement. So. While rounds is played is less than five, which you remember it starts out as zero because we just declared that. It's a while statement. This is a while loop. <clears throat> the as we just read, the text said, "Don't worry about using loops." If uh, but I went ahead and Googled this, and I and there we have went over loops, but there's like you know there's several different kinds you can use. Um, I I felt like while was the maybe the best one for me at least it worked for me anyway different loops you could use a you know a, a you know do while loop this, this is just a while loop but you could do uh, a for loop you could do all kinds of stuff so anyway uh, <clears throat> excuse me got rounds played uh, starting at zero so we initialize the rounds played plus plus which means uh, increment by one so we're going to iterate one through that, but as you know, uh, since plus plus is after rounds played, it's not actually um, computing that value. It's not setting it right away. So, so if you were to council output rounds played right here, it would be zero still because it won't it won't uh, read it in until the next loop. So um, anyway, <coughs> then we have a uh, if you remember. This stuff right here is the exact same stuff we had at the bottom. So basically, the bottom stuff at the bottom of yesterday's video is no longer there, and it's now up here inside of this while loop. So basically, we'll go over it again. So computer selection is a constant variable that it takes in computer play, which is up above. So that's the computer doing the randomized um, uh, random generator number to generate the rock, paper, scissors for its play. And then that computation and that rock, paper, or scissors is put into computer selection variable. And then player selection is taking on the prompt of, and I had to Google this, because it does say, in, as we read in the text, that you want to prompt your uh, your player for their, for their selection. So I just put in player, comma, please type in your selection, rock, paper, or scissors, end quote. And if you put it inside a prompt, that will prompt the screen, as we'll see at the end, we'll demo it, and then that entry that they get put in is going to be put into player selection variable. And then we have a console.log, play round, okay, and then inside play round, before that we have a function that runs called capitalize that we talked about earlier and we've seen yesterday. It, what it does, it transforms player selection into uh, f uh, first letter cap. I won't go over that in again in detail, but if you want to uh, rewatch yesterday's video, or the previous video to this one, and then uh, it takes in another ver another uh, not not variable parameter called computer selection, which is the output of the computer play. So then that those two uh, argue uh, parameters uh, run the play around, and that's console.logged. So the contents of that is is run through console.log. Then there's another console.log here. Player win player win totals plus and then concatenate player wins <coughs> and uh, computer win totals concatenate computer win we haven't went over those two variables yet um, those are these right here they're initialized as zero um, they're not in here they're not um, at this particular point in the position as the code going down linearly they're at, they're at a value zero right now because you have to loop through one for those to gain values you'll see below here uh, and then and then we have inside the we have an embedded function inside of the while loop if you can see here I can scroll over so you got an embedded function inside while loop 
and that's play around. So I won't go over this part because it's that's not changed. All I did was I moved it from where it was and put it inside of the while loop, which is inside of the game function. So it's a nested, it's a nested function inside of a loop. Um, so if it, if that makes sense. So there's that. So what it does, it does exactly what it did before. No, that's changed. It runs through. It it either returns tie. Oh, I did add. Actually, I did add some things. Um, this is where the player win and computer win comes in. So the only thing I added was say uh, if first letter cap is paper and computer selection is rock, it will return the same values before paper beat rock, which goes up here, uh, paper beat rock, and then you know it spits out the uh, um, the string. And the only difference is, is this adds in before it returns it. It it um, iterates player win, <coughs> which is plus plus, <coughs> which means player win will become one, or if it was one, it would become two because it, remember this plus plus increments by one. So and same thing with computer win. So we're just now we're tracking the wins as per the requirement for number six. And that goes up to here. So when it lo loops back up, because see, we're still in the while loop here. So when it comes through here the second time and reruns, now you have values in here. Because let's say player win had a value. So you'll have player win totals. These are uh, numbers, in integers. So player win will be one if it was a win, or computer win will be one if it was a win, or it will stay zero if it wasn't um, a win that makes sense so it will loop through all this five times and then it stops because in our while loop up here we have rounds played is less than five so once it gets to five iterations this uh, while loop breaks because rounds played <coughs> after five is now now a uh, a false statement so it breaks out of the while loop That's that. So going down here to this section, we have in, we're still inside the loop now, and we are we are outside of the uh, the embedded play around function, but we are still inside. This here is uh, this uh, if player section determining who won the five round sets is still inside of the uh, the overall game loop. It's not in the while loop though. So. So we're still in the game loop, or the game function, excuse me. So we have player win. If player win, which as you know, we just went over as a number. If player win is greater than computer win, obviously game winner uh, takes the value of you win. We define um, within the uh, game function we have here, game winner equals string, empty string. So we, we have that defined up here, so we have uh, something to put game winner in. That's where you get here. Game winner equals you win is a string, so it works. It fits just nicely without any conversion. Value is a string. Else if player wins is equal to computer win, game win equals tie. And then else, it, so there, you don't need an else if because else is the only other possibility if those two aren't true. Game winner equals computer wins. And then the last section here, or one, getting towards the last, write out the winner to the screen. So this counts as a log. Very simpler. The the five game winner is and in space end quote. So um, it looks good, formatted wise. And then concatenate game winner. So if game winner was computer wins, it would say the five the five game winner is space computer wins in caps. Next one down uh, is that function capitalized. I didn't change anything about this except put a uh, put a comment in to describe it. And then the very last line, function call to start the game, game. Excuse me. <clears throat> so that's it. Went through that kind of quick, but I didn't want to make a super long video here, so I'll demo it for you if you run it. So if you run it here, it says player, please type in the selection rock, paper, or scissors. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll do a rock. And so here's the output. You lose. It says you selected rock because as last time we seen, 
uh, it goes ahead and transforms and if you noticed or not but I put in small case R so it transformed it to upper so we know that works and the computer selected paper so we know that that algorithm works because it selected that random generated and it's formatted properly player here's the new stuff so we have a we have a in the background it's not printing but in the background it's also counting the loop so it's keeping track of how many times you played so this is play one uh, player wins total zero computer wins total one which means that um, we lost because we selected rock and paper beats rock so computer wins total gets one so if we go on to the next one here's round two if I type in paper you lose you select a paper and the computer randomly generates scissors uh, scissors cuts paper so now it's see how it's keeping a, a running total so this is round two it's keeping that track in the background player wins total two or computer wins excuse me so we'll do go back to rock it's a tie you selected rock and the computer selected rock player wins total zero so see it's a tie so when it's a tie I've got the algorithm set to not give anybody anything so it's like the play never happened but it still is counting it so the background counter um, which is the um, the uh, the game um, rounds played counter here is still counting so that counted as iteration three so we have let's do scissors it's a tie oh, look at that just my luck I, I swear my algorithm's not broke it's just coincidence you select a scissors computer select scissors so again it carries over zero and two so and this should be the last time it runs because this will be the fifth iteration. Do paper. It says you lose. You selected paper, and the computer selected scissors. Scissors cuts paper. So, <coughs> so I didn't win any on that game. And you see my dialog box went away. Computer win is three, and then that algorithm runs that checks the totals uh, right down here at the bottom, if you, right here. So it runs the if else statement. And so it checks that and sees that computer won because computer has three. It says the five game winner is computer wins, which is the printout right here. The five game winner is game winner. And so contents of game winner is computer wins and the computer wins. So that is it in a nutshell. And you can just hit refresh to play again and it'll just start all over again. So. Um, here's how I looked up for the syntax for the prompt because they hadn't went over the that yet in the um, text so um, we went over that here or I went over that and learned that uh, the I guess the fully qualified syntax is window.prompt but you can um, just use prompt so I went with this example here when I set mine up so I used uh, now they have let sign equals prompt and so I used um, uh, player selection equals prompt and then the, the text player please type in your selection rock paper or scissors and then that answer gets put into player selection which has been defined already and everything works no errors or anything so that is rock paper scissors um, don't forget to commit your code um, and update your github um, I'm not making this public just yet because uh, it does say in here somewhere that basically you're going to go back. Yeah, you're going to go back later and add a GUI and buttons and text. So it, it basically says hold off for right now from publishing it. So I am publishing it to GitHub, but I'm not making it a public page like we normally have with our previous two um, extra or um, projects. So um, I haven't done that yet. So we will wait on that and I completed the lesson and so go to view course we are 78 percent done and we'll be heading on to clean code for next time so anyway that's it um, if you uh, wanted to have a more thorough understanding or didn't understand something completely just go ahead and rewatch the video and um, slow me down if need be or pause um, but with that said, thank you for coming along tonight in the journey. I uh, hope you had fun and learned a little bit along the way. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content. And until next time, see ya.